Am I wrong for expecting my brother to uninvite my soon-to-be ex-husband and my friends from his wedding? My 34 female brother, 31 male, is getting married in a month. My brother is not friends with my friends, but he knows them by association and gets along with them and he's invited them to his wedding. My soon-to-be ex is also invited. He was invited anyway before I found out certain stuff. My husband and I have known each other since high school and we shared the same friend group. His friends are my friends and vice versa. Recently I found out that my husband has been cheating on me for 4 months with another woman and all of our friends have been covering for him. They all knew and enabled him. I immediately filed for divorce. I came clean to my family about it a few days after I found out. They were all shocked and angry. My dad was more focused on my husband cheating but my mom was more focused on our friends covering for him. My brother was also upset because he was close to my husband. My husband has left home and he's living with his sister for now. Yesterday the topic of my brother's wedding came up and he was talking about the seating arrangements with me and my parents. He asked me if I would be comfortable to be seated next to my husband and our friends. I looked at him in disbelief and told him he shouldn't even be asking that question. I'm also upset that he's inviting them after all, especially my friends since they're not his friends at all and he just knows them by association. He said it would be mean if he invited all of them just one month before the wedding and said that he understands why I feel uncomfortable but he doesn't want to be mean. I reminded him how my husband cheated on me and I got lied on by all my friends who were enabling him. He says he's very aware but I should not insist on him uninviting them because it's his wedding and he makes the rules. I dropped it and didn't continue the conversation, but it got me thinking, am I the asshole for expecting my cheating husband and the friends who covered for him to get uninvited from my brother's wedding? My husband, male 26, sent me, female 26, an immature inflammatory email as I was driving to the airport for a 10-day work trip. Now he has cut all contact. My husband and I have been together for five years, married for two of those years. We just bought a house five months ago. No kids yet. Our lives have been crazy busy though. We spent all spring renovating our new house. At my job, I was given nearly double my usual workload after some of my colleagues were laid off. I gained some weight in the winter and have been busting my ass at the gym to get rid of it. Yesterday morning, while in a taxi on my way to the airport, husband sends a message to my work email, which is connected to my phone. He's never done this. We always communicate in person or by text. I open it up and it's a sarcastic diatribe basically saying he won't miss me for the 10 days I'm gone. Attached is a spreadsheet of all the times he has tried to initiate sex since June 1st with a column for my, quote, excuses, using verbatim quotes of why I didn't feel like having sex at the very moment. According to his document, we've only had sex three times in the last seven weeks out of 27 attempts on his part. This is a side of him I have never seen before. Bitter, immature, full of hatred. In person, he'd been acting normal the whole time, maybe a little standoffish in the last week, but completely out of left field. Our sex life has tapered in the last few months, but isn't that allowed? We are adults leading busy, stressful lives. I cook for him. I do his laundry. I keep our house clean and tidy. It's not like our sex life was going to be this way forever. It was a temporary slowdown due to extenuating circumstances. I immediately tried phoning him three to four times before getting on the plane. No answer. When I landed in my destination city, I tried calling two more times. No answer. I texted him saying we needed to talk, and he needed to call me at his earliest convenience. No response. He's never intentionally ignored my communications before. I pretty much stayed inside my hotel all evening waiting by the phone, then cried myself to sleep. It's now morning, and he still hasn't contacted me. I'm supposed to be visiting clients for the next nine days on behalf of my company, and I'm an emotional wreck. Why is he putting me through this? What the hell am I supposed to do? I, 22 male, was worried girlfriend, 22 female was cheating. So I hid in her coat closet while she was having a girl's night at her apartment. Her friend found me, obviously humiliating me and girlfriend. Is there any way to recover from this? I guess this is all in the title and I have a feeling Reddit isn't going to be too kind to me, but I really screwed up and don't know where else to turn. I got some weird vibes from my girlfriend this week, and when she said she didn't want me to come over last night, I was really concerned my worst fears were coming true. I was so panicked, I decided to hide in a coat closet she never uses to see what was up. It turns out she was just having a girl's night, and my girlfriend basically told her friends all the same issues she's talked to me about. Work, failing LSAT, gyno problems, etc. And was even very complimentary of me. I felt super guilty, so I figured I would just stay put until she went to bed, then I would quietly leave. Shit hit the fan when a friend spilled something and girlfriend told her to get the vacuum out of the hall closet. I was in the coat closet in the entryway. To my absolute horror, 
the door opened and the friend screamed when seeing me. My girlfriend was furious and I didn't even try to lie. I said I was worried she was acting weird and I decided to spy on her. I sat there in an apartment of four women more humiliated than I have ever been. It's a shame like I've never felt. My girlfriend just said to get out and never call her again. This morning, she texted me that her dad and brother will be at her apartment from three to five, and I need to come get my stuff and bring hers over. That was all she said. Is there any way I can recover this relationship? My mum, 39 female, lied to me, 17 male, and my real dad, late 30s male, just showed up for the first time. Sorry if this is incoherent, but my mind is racing right now. My dad died when I was eight years old. Well, the man I thought was my dad did. My mum dated other men, but she's never remarried or had a serious live-in boyfriend since, so I've basically been without a dad since I was eight. But earlier today, this man came into my work. I work at a movie theater in the concession stand, by the way. So this man came in and kept letting people go ahead of him in line until I was done helping the customer I was with. I didn't think anything at first, but this guy was kind of nervous, but trying to talk to me. He asked what I recommended to eat and asked what kind of movies I liked. He seemed friendly but shy and I was just being polite and making conversation like we're supposed to do with customers. Anyway, he paid and left and I didn't see him when his movie finished because it was busy or maybe he didn't even watch a movie. I don't know. Anyway, I got off work a little bit ago and when I got home, that same man was in my living room talking to my mum and it kind of creeped me out and my mum started panicking when I asked who he was and she just kept saying, he's no one, he's leaving. But the man said he wasn't leaving until we talked and said she needs to tell me the truth. Well, you can guess from the title, he said he's my dad. I just felt this twist in my stomach. My mum started rambling saying my dad that died was my real dad and how much he loved me and took care of me and that this doesn't change that. The thing is, something happened last year that made me question my mum about my dad and my medical history. She said she didn't know anything about it, but today I just yelled at her. She could have told me then and there that he wasn't my biological father, but she didn't. I asked if this man was telling the truth and she started crying and nodding. I guess I didn't notice at the theater because it was never something I would think of, but looking at him, it's pretty clear we are related since he looks so much like me. Or I guess I look like him is more accurate. He tried to talk to me and swore he never knew I existed or he would have been in my life. My mum didn't deny any of this. I asked her if this man was dangerous or an abusive ex or something. He was offended and she assured me it wasn't that at all. She wanted to sit down and talk but I just felt so nauseous and overwhelmed so I just grabbed my keys and told my mum I was staying at my best friend Josh's house for the night. I came here and Josh was sympathetic and let me vent, but he fell asleep and I'm just here awake and my brain won't shut off. I feel so betrayed by my mum. How could she not tell me the truth? When I was little, I understand, but I'm old enough to know where I come from. It feels so unfair that she denied me a father for half my life. I love my dad that died and I still miss him, but I've wanted a father for so long. There's so much I've gone through where I feel like having a dad would have been much better and easier. I love my mum and she's been incredible in raising me, but it's not the same as having a dad. Especially when this guy is my actual dad and it seems he would have been there if he knew. I don't know what to say to him or to my mum. I know I have to go home eventually, but I just don't know what I'm supposed to say or do. He probably hates me and thinks I'm a crybaby because I cried and stormed out. I feel lost. Am I the asshole for refusing to cook for my husband after what he said? I work as a freelance artist from home and my husband works long hours driving. I do majority of the housework and look after our children, but my husband also takes on his fair share. I enjoy cooking as a mom and I make sure to give my children a wide variety of food. I want them to appreciate different cultures, flavors, and different types of cuisine from around the world. So a few days a week, me and my children make a recipe from another country. My husband, on the other hand, has a more plain palate. Well, a week ago, we hired a babysitter and went to a friend's for dinner. They cooked a veggie pie, mashed potatoes, and vegetables. My husband said, oh God, finally, a decent meal for once. Pickle pie banana is always cooking these awful smelly dishes. He said, oh God, finally, a decent meal for once. My wife is always cooking these awful smelly dishes. I was hurt and looked at my husband and asked him what he meant. He said that he only puts up with it because he doesn't have time to cook something decent for himself. 
The meal was awkward after that, but neither of us brought it up until we got home. I said I wouldn't stop cooking foreign food with the kids, and if he didn't like it, he would have to cook for himself. He once again said that he didn't have time for that, and I should just cook him something that he likes. I refused because when he gets home, he games for four hours and could cook for himself. I cook with my kids this weekend, and I told my husband I didn't leave him any, and he was pissed but ordered out. What's up? What's up with your butt up? Gotta get used to that. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to your favorite story time. I hope that I'm coming at the perfect time for you guys, just to kind of get you out of your reality for a moment with a good story that will entertain you and help you get through cleaning, or if you're sick, or whatever, you just want to chill. If you're new here, what's up? My name is Nikki. I tell stories here. I'm dipping my toes into true crime, and honestly, I've just been doing whatever I want to do vlogs and stuff like that so if any of that interests you definitely show that subscribe button some love i would very much appreciate it i would love to have your fine ass be a part of my family and of course you already know what to do with that like button if you guys would like to see more videos such as this one i don't know if you guys can tell but my octave in my voice is a little bit lower a bit lower today the reason being is because a bitch is suffering from a terrible sore throat no i do not have rona okay that's a fact i don't know if i like slept with my mouth open girl or what but like <clears throat> you know I will be sipping on my tea today, but if I seem like a little bit off or like I'm just not, you know, as loud as I usually am, I do apologize, okay? But the show must go on. Okay, I wasn't about to let y'all down. Right down here, I dropped a cough drop in there. Highly 10 out of 10 recommend. Let's just jump right into this story time. Grab your wine, grab your snacks, get comfy, and let's get into this. Oh, this sounds so petty. Ugh, I know. Be for real though. Have y'all ever like been a part of an argument? And you know that you wrong. Like, you know that you were straight up wrong, but you are not about to take that ill. Just hear me out, okay? <laughs> this took place, like, years ago. I was, like, in my early 20s, right? Y'all know that I was, like, doing, like, some light. I thought I was a model. Not, not, I really didn't. But, like, <laughs> I had a friend who, you know, was a designer. And she was starting out here in Denver. And she was really passionate. And I just wanted to get into that scene and network and all of that. So, I used to help her out. Um, I did some, like, catalog modeling for her. Some, you know very light runway okay like definitely not top model status charity events and and you know boutique openings and stuff like that so i was working during the day and at night i was in them streets girl trying to network and get to know everybody i really enjoyed seeing the behind the scenes of putting shows together like that so anyways girl so i ended up doing that and what i thought was going to be like just a few times ended up going on for like two three years and like every time my friend needed somebody reliable she would get a hold of me and i would do different things sometimes i would like just be setting up sometimes I would actually be modeling and sometimes I would do makeup and stuff like that and I would say like two years or so into like this experience right and you know I'm doing like these little modeling gigs here and there for different brands and it's mostly just my friends who have who are starting their own brands right now everybody has like a different way of getting models for their shows like some of them do like straight up auditions other ones are just like come in like like let's just chill and like you can be a part of my show so it just depends on the person like the designer so I'd been working with my friend and like you know at the runway shows and stuff I was like meeting other people and I met this other girl and she was starting her own brand as well and she like knew my friend uh, so I connected with her we ended up exchanging numbers she was dropping her first collection ever and she showed me some of her like sample pieces so cute okay like she had a wide range of pieces I think like she was more of like a boutique so apparently she needed a few models to like do her catalog modeling for like her on my website and she was also going to be a part of like this big fashion show that was going to be happening in a few months and she needed models for that too so anyways girl she ends up getting a hold of me out of nowhere right she tells me that she's having auditions for models and that she would really love to see me there because she's like considering me and I was like Bonsoir. like you know this was the first time that any of my friends asked me to audition like um they just like knew me and they were like Nikki okay girl like I'm gonna put you in this and just walk and I was like okay like my only job is just to not trip and fall and make an ass out of myself. So, you know, but this girl was like, nah, like I need you to come in for like an audition. We got to get your measurements, like very much about her business. And I was like, okay, cool. So of course I'm really excited. I say yes. Before I get off the phone, she's like, hey, do you happen to know anyone with experience? Like, you know, I have a lot of applicants that are like brand, brand new, which of course I'm going to consider, but I do want a few like more experienced models. And I was like, hell yeah. And I had like a few different friends that of course, kind of did the same thing. So I told her, I was like, I have like two or three friends in mind that I think could help, like let me see if they're available. And she was like, okay, cool. So she gives me the date, time, place, everything. And this place was kind of far, if I'm being honest. 
so I get all that information and so now I just have to nail this down with one of my friends who can make it on that exact day and time and all that, right? I call my first friend, she can't make it. My second friend, she's working. So the third friend, I was like, please tell me that you can make it. Cause like this was an audition. So I also wanted somebody that I knew to be with me cause I was like kind of nervous. So I get a hold of my third friend and we will name her Vanessa. So I get a hold of Vanessa and I text her and I was like, yo, what are you doing on this date, right? And she was like, this is random, why? So I give her all the tea about my friend and and her designs and all that. And I was like, you know, she needs another experienced model. And my friend Vanessa had been doing this since she was like still in high school. Like she was like at 16 years old, like she was doing photo shoots and car shows and stuff like that. So, so she was actually pretty experienced by this point. She was interested, but she was like a little bit confused. She was like, what you mean an audition? Like, like what does that entail? And I was like, girl, I don't know. Like, again, we are not professionals at all. Finally, I'm just like, bitch, please go with me. Like, that's why I'm telling you like, please go with me. Like, I don't want to go by myself. I don't want to let my friend down. Like, I just, you know, I really wanted to be part of the opportunity, but the whole audition piece really made me nervous. I'm not going to lie. So I was like, bitch, please come with me. Right. And she was like, all right, Nikki, she told me to wear like tighter fitted clothes. So that way they can take proper measurements, at least five inch heels. Okay. At least. So I tell Vanessa and I'm like, yeah, you know, we need to wear something like that's a little bit more form fitting and we need some five inch heels. Now, Y'all already know me. And if you don't know me, hi, bestie. I do not wear heels, like hardly ever. I know how to walk in them. Like, you know, they don't scare me, girl. I just don't like being uncomfortable. So anytime I could get away with not wearing heels, I'm not gonna wear heels. And like, also I was like, bitch, if I have to run, I need to be able to run. So I was, oh, even when I wore heels, like I was like more of a boots girl, chunky heel type of girl because, oh, the stilettos, bitch, oh my God. Uh, I just hated being in pain while out and about. My designer friend that, you know, we're doing this for when she said that and she was like, you know, at least five inch heels. I was like, bitch, I don't even know if I have that. Y'all know I'm gonna be honest with you. Like I was not making a whole lot of money. So I didn't have like money to be spending on heels like that. Like I would spend my money on Jordans. I would spend my money on Nikes. <laughs> but Vanessa? Girl, she was my complete opposite with that. Like she had nothing but heels. Like uh, she was my friend that would show up with heels like at every event. Like we could just be chilling. <laughs> And I say this with all the love of my heart, no shade, honestly, like everyone just has like their own, their own identity and their own style and their own thing. And on it, I respect it. Okay. So don't make fun of people that do this shit. I'm just letting you know her personality. So we would like, you know, go chill at one of our guy friends houses, It'd be all of us. <laughs> and she would be the only one to show up in heels. Like she just loved heels. She found heels more comfortable than like tennis shoes, which I, pfft, so of course I'm like, girl, can I borrow some of your shoes? And she was like, I don't think we're the same size. Sure enough, bitch, she was like a size bigger than me. And I was like, fuck. And she was like, you know what? She was like, but anyways, girl, like if we're gonna do this, like I'm gonna want a new pair of shoes. Why don't we meet at the mall and we'll find our outfits and our shoes and stuff like that. And I was like, all right, cool. We meet up at the mall. And uh, again, I was not making a whole lot of money. Like we were both so young, right? So, you know, we got a little bit of coin to work with. <laughs> so we go into the mall. We passed JCPenney's, ain't nobody got time for that. We passed Macy's, ain't nobody got the money for that. <laughs> so basically like our only options was like Charlotte Russe. <laughs> It's like Charlotte Roost and Forever 21. Like, honestly, okay, it's like that's where we were planning to find our shoes. So we walk around the mall. We end up finding, you know, some pretty simple outfits. Like, this is just an audition. I'm pretty sure she doesn't need to see our style. So I did like a skinny jeans moment. And like, you know, I don't even remember what kind of top girl, but we found our clothes. Now we need to find our shoes. So we start walking around. We go to Forever 21. I didn't find no shoes there. She kind of found some, but they were really uncomfortable. So we leave Forever 21 and we start walking towards the opposite end of the mall. And we get to the end, there's like this store that we had never seen before. It literally just opened and it was like grand opening or whatever. And I think it was called like, I think it was, oh my God, if my memory serves me correct, it was called like Angels. I think it was called Angels Beach. And it is just this massive, <laughs> it's a massive store. And it's filled with nothing but shoes. Like it almost looks like a DSW, you know, like when you go into one of them, you know, like very open and just nothing but shoes. And it was literally like a ah, moment, okay? We're like, oh bitch, yes. And there are so many girls in there like looking at shoes. So we go in there, girl, 
not only did they have a ton of shoes, but these shoes were hella cheap, okay? Like they obviously were not name brand, but all of them were heel. And like they ranged from flats, pumps to all that. And then they also had some dancer heels, girl. They had the big old platform, you know, with the fur and shit. And I was like, oh, boss, wow. And then on the sides, they had nothing but like, they had like accessories. They had jewelry and scarves and shit like that, right? So we go in there and we're like kids in a fucking candy store. And it is just so many shoes. It's like almost overwhelming <laughs> how many options there were. So I was like, yeah. So we're up and down the aisles, we're showing each other different shoes. And immediately Vanessa, like they had the shoes according to like the style. And so she, immediately Vanessa like beelines it over to like the stilettos and the pumps and all that. And I'm more so like strappy chunky heel. So <laughs> we're like literally shouting across the store and like, look, Vanessa, look at these. Like, what do you think about these? And she would be like, Nikki, what, you know, what do you think about these? And like, I'm like, mm, they're ugly. And literally almost every single one of the heels that she was showing me, I was like, beach, like, I can't even imagine walking in those. Like, you're crazy. We spend like, I would say like a good almost hour Hour in there just like trying on different shoes and you know just we had a really good time and finally we find a pair of shoes each right heels that I got were like 35 40 bucks okay and then I don't remember how much she paid but it was like super super affordable we leave super happy we go pick up some fast food and then we're on our merry way the next time that I was gonna see Vanessa was at the audition right audition took place on the weekend but like pretty early it was like a 9 a.m. audition and this place like I said it was not close it was literally like almost an hour away from me like where she wanted to have this audition take place and I was like why the fuck does it have to be all the way over here here I go getting up early on my weekend getting ready like trying to make sure that I look cute you know putting on my outfit I definitely do not wear my heels outside the house and you know I pack everything in the car and I head off on this damn road trip and Vanessa's texting me and she's like bitch this place is Bar. And I was like, I already know. I'm so sorry. So after like what seems like forever, I finally get to this building. And by the way, it was super fucking confusing. All of the buildings looked like, oh, like this close. I was this close to being like, fuck it, I'm going home. Like this is just too much. Now keep in mind, keep in mind, we were not getting paid for this at all. Even if we would have been picked as a model for her, it's not compensated at all. Like we, all of this was purely volunteer work, okay? Anyways, y'all, I finally find the building. Then we have to find the suite inside of the building. It was a whole thing. So I meet up with Vanessa in the parking lot. We walk in together, right? Now again, if I don't have to wear heels, I'm not going to. So I brought two pairs of shoes. One pair was flats and the other pair was heels. I will put these on when it's time for my audition, okay? I'm not about to be strutting across the parking lot with my toes like this. It's just not gonna happen. So that's me. And I have like my heels in my hand and my flats on, right? But Vanessa, girl, she mm, all in the parking lot just Okay, we're at the same height, but she literally looks so much taller than me in her heels. And I could not believe how she was just handling that pavement because beach, my ankles could never. We finally get to the suite. And when we walk in, like to my shock, there's so many girls there, like so many girls, okay? And Vanessa and I were like in our early 20s. She was like two years older than me. These girls, young i'm talking about high school young i'm talking about 15 60 17 years old and i was like <laughs> are we too old to be here some of them even had their moms there with them i had to put a number on it i would say that there was like a good 15 20 of us okay so when we walked in it was like a front area everybody's in there like it's almost like a waiting area you know and then there was one girl behind the desk she starts handing out clipboards that so we have to fill out our information da 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 and then we were going to keep the clipboards with us during our audition because they were going to take our measurements and we needed to record that onto the clipboard like onto that page on the clipboard so the minute that we get inside there it was just like so fast and like just like a lot of demands and me and Vanessa are like oh shit okay okay so finally my friend comes out the one that you know this is all for her brand she comes out and she was like you know thank y'all so much for being here I really appreciate it I'm super excited um we're just gonna head into this big conference room and we will start our audition now I don't know why bitch but I thought like when I hear audition like I automatically think like American Idol you know <laughs> I don't know 
why like you know one person at a time no bitch we all filed into that room and it was like a big conference room but with no furniture okay and it had like carpet on the floor which i was really thankful for because obviously walking on carpet with heels is so much easier and i didn't want to bust my ass in front of everybody we all file in there and we start getting our instructions so we're all in there and we're literally just looking at each other and beach it was like all of us at the same time were like oh we're doing this in front of each we're doing this in front of each other mm -hmm. and so everybody's like oh fuck like you could tell that so many girls were nervous and we were all like looking at each other like bitch if you make fun of me i swear to god and boom just like that the audition starts and so i switch out my shoes real fast and literally my friend though like the one that was if this was her brand she walked by me and she was like girl i was about to stay like i know you did not show up here in flats i was like Ever so you know she was <laughs> she was making fun of me for showing up there like that and i was like i am not about to have my feet hurt like no ma'am some girls are like fucking practicing beach you would have thought we were trying out for america's next top model and i started getting so nervous because like Tina's the one that, you know, is heading up this entire thing. This is her brand. So Tina has like two or three other girls that were like her cousins or her sisters. They were related to her somehow. And they all had tape measures. So they start going around to each girl and measuring, you know, our chest and our waist and our hips and all of that. And we're, you know, writing it down. It took, and girl, it took so long. They literally... They had us all line up on the back side of the wall. And like we had to all walk together our best model walk together girl it was like literally like we were in gym class with heels okay i swear like this audition took like two hours and towards the end of it i was kind of getting a little annoyed because i was like bitch i'm tired i'm not getting paid i'm far from home like am i in the show or not can you just like stop making the funk with me like just tell me now because like this is just too much finally the audition comes to an end so we pack up our shit we leave and vanessa and i decide to go get lunch because we are exhausted from doing a heel gym class okay we have have lunch together we have a really good time we end up going home everything after that was normal within the next few days my friend had texted me and Vanessa saying that we were picked to be a part of her upcoming show we were really happy but I was like in my mind I was like you lucky <laughs> that I'm in this show bitch because if you would have told me that I wasn't in the show and I went all the way over there for nothing I'd have been pissed right so that's how that turned out so we found out that both Vanessa and I were in the show so fast forward and at this time I was working at this insurance company and it was literally like right down the street from the mall Vanessa and I had gone to to prep for this audition but one day came around and Vanessa texted me out of nowhere and she was like hey girl what are you doing after work because she and I both had eight to five jobs and I was like uh nothing like going home like and it was like a Tuesday Wednesday right and she was like hey you want to meet me at the mall and I was like uh yeah I did not ask for what like I didn't ask too many questions I was like girls stay after work say less so sure enough after work you know I hop in my car go down the street and I meet up with her at the mall and when I meet up with her in the parking lot I see that she has an angel's bag with her and then that place is the spot that we got our shoes from and so I'm like looking at the bag I was like what's that she was like oh I have to return those shoes girl and I was like oh really she goes yeah like the inside wasn't stitched right now the sole is like kind of coming out so like we're behind her car and she puts the bag on top of her trunk she opens the box and she starts showing me like different parts of the shoe where she was like it just wasn't made well like I can see the glue the sole is lifting and you know I was really where I was like girl but like that's what we get because you know these were cheaper shoes you know what I mean and she was like yeah but like they're brand new like they shouldn't be looking like this she was like, like honestly bitch like one shoe is fitting one foot completely different than the other she was like I know that they're not exactly identical so she starts showing me and I don't know how to explain it like the front part of it because these were like some platform heels like you could clearly tell it was like really noticeable now that one of the shoes like seemed narrower than the other the other one seemed wider and so she was like so when I put my feet in them like they don't fit the same you know what I mean she was like and I don't have that issue with no other shoes like it's not like I have one foot that's bigger than the other you know and she was like so I'm about to return these shits and get my money back and I was like oh so you know I see that and I'm like oh okay like that makes sense and I could clearly see that, you know, what she was saying was true. Like, there was definitely a huge difference between, I don't know if it was the seams or what, right? Anyways, girl, we go inside the mall. We just, you know, kind of shoot the shit for a little bit and we end up back at Angel's. We walk in, you know, my eye is caught by something and I'm like, ooh, pretty shiny. So I take off and 
Vanessa heads straight up to the front with her bag to go get her refund, right? This time, there weren't a whole lot of people in the store. It was, it was like so different than when we had gone the weekend before because like obviously this was like during the week. I wanna say like maybe one or two other girls were in there, but like while we were in there, they left. So at this point, it was just me, Vanessa, and the girl behind the counter. Now the girl behind our counter was super young. She was like our age. And I think that her family owned this store. So she's at the cash register and she's talking to Vanessa. And at first I was like, you know, at the, towards the front of the store so I really couldn't hear their conversation. And as time is going, I'm like, you know, making my way through the aisles and I'm getting closer and closer to them, right? Just randomly I look up at Vanessa to kind of wonder what's taking so long, like refunds are, you know, usually quite simple and nobody else is in the store. So I looked up at Vanessa and I just could tell by her body language that she was getting a little frustrated and like her, you know, she's like shaking her head and she was like, I just don't understand. And like, you could clearly tell that there was a misunderstanding going on or like there was an issue, right? Of course, my nosy ass, I need to know what the fuck is going on. So I start, you know, inching my way over there and I start pretending to look at the accessories that are like right next to the cashier, right? So I get closer, I start hearing Vanessa say, this is the date that I bought them. This was literally three, four days ago. They're defected, they don't fit me right and you're telling me that I can't have a refund? Immediately, I'm like, oh, I was like, damn, she's getting denied, you know? Y'all, I could not believe what I heard next. Like, this girl, I'm, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not being biased. Vanessa was not, like, being bitchy. She wasn't having an attitude. She was like, I just wanna understand, though, because, like, I've showed you all of these things that are wrong with it, and, like, this is the date that I've had it. Like, it's definitely less than 30 days, like, so, so I just want, like, a refund. Y'all! grabs onto the shoe box and she slides it to her and she goes, I'm going to say it again. The reason why you are not going to get a refund is because these shoes have been worn. Y'all immediately, I'm like, oh bitch, the tone, the tone, like unnecessary, what the fuck? And like the whole snatchation of it all and just like, you know, why, why are you doing that? And bitch, back then I was like hot headed. So the minute that somebody was like out of line, I was like, bitch, hold up. I got trauma, bitch. I cannot hear that type of tone in someone's voice without getting triggered. At this point, she has my attention too. And I'm like, you know, I don't mind that you telling my friend, no, but you don't have to tell her like that. Of course, Vanessa was like, yeah, I had to wear them to see that they don't fit. She was like, I didn't notice the seams and like, Vanessa's biggest thing was one shoe is not fitting right and the other one is. Like these clearly, she was like, I don't know if like these are not the same shoe. And so the girl, everything that she was saying, she was like, no, they are. That's how they're boxed. Like they're literally marked the same size. Vanessa worked in customer service. And th it was at this point that I could hear like in her voice that she was really trying to stay calm. And she was like, I understand what you're telling me. But what I'm trying to tell you is that there's clearly a difference on these shoes and like, you know, now the sole is coming out of this one. She was like, that has nothing to do with the shoes being worn. So then that girl grabs one of the shoes and she was like, I can tell that you wore these outside. She was like, so it wasn't just you trying them on, like you wore them somewhere. Vanessa not backing down. Why did this bitch go? No, I did not. I wore them inside in a carpeted environment. So I don't know what it is that you're talking about, but I need my refund. Obviously, obviously I'm peeping it. I'm peeping it, okay? Here's what I'm talking about. When you like are involved in something and you know, <laughs> you know your friend is in the wrong cause I looked at Vanessa like, bitch, hold on. Like I know you didn't have the shoes for that long, but I definitely saw you walking across that parking lot, bitch, to our audition in them fucking shoes. So like with that, this girl ain't wrong. But you know, I ain't gonna say nothing. I'm not about to snitch out my friend. So you know, I'm just sitting there. I'm just like listening to this conversation and I straight up hear <laughs> Vanessa blatantly lie. And I'm like, like, I could see if like that was like the only issue with these shoes. She was like, but I'm telling you that they're not made right. She was like, even if I would have worn them, she's like, I would never just like bring them back just cause she was like, but these shoes are clearly defected. Bitch, why did this girl go, uh, you wore them. So clearly they're not that defected. Ooh, feeling a little spicy. A little spicy, huh, mommy? Okay, hold up. Yeah, it was at this moment. I was like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, I was like, you don't have to talk to her like that. And she looked at me and she was like, who are you? And I was like, oh, bitch. Mm, okay, listen. So you wanna tag me in? So you wanna 
tag me in. I was like, first of all, most importantly, I'm one of your customers as well. I purchased from here. She was like, okay, good for you. Like, bitch, I'm telling you the mouth on this one, the mouth on her. And I was like, I just looked at her and I was like, what is wrong with you? She was like, I'm just tired of repeating myself. Like she's not getting a refund. She was like, we don't even do refunds here. And I was like, you guys don't do refunds at all. And she goes, I swear on everything, I'm not exaggerating, okay? Like usually when they have like no refunds, like they'll put like a big sign like somewhere like near the cash register and it's like big and like bold and like no refunds. Why does she point to a paper that was taped to the back of the wall behind her? Literally, it was lined paper, bitch. It looked like somebody's homework and shit. I thought that that was somebody trying to show off their good grades, bitch. But sure enough, if you squint just right, it says no refunds in red pen. Of course, Vanessa was like, I did not know that you guys didn't offer refunds. And she was like, well, it's right there, so. Well, why didn't you just tell me that in the first place? And she was like, because I know that you're lying and that you wore these shoes. Ah, I know, I know. I know my friend was in the wrong, but I, I just got, I got tired of her mouth and I was like for the thousandth time She said that she ain't worn the shoes out anywhere. She tried them on. That's fine They don't fit I was like but for you to have her go through that entire spiel and you don't even offer refunds in the first fucking place Like say something all of a sudden me and her are having a standoff and I was like by the way And I went into my purse and I got my receipt from when I've been shopping here before I had the same purse with me And I got the receipt. I said um where on your receipt does it tell me no refunds? It's right there. Nobody can see that. Not one fucking person can see that. I don't know if you guys know how to work a printer. Do a little word document, girl. You make the letters a little bigger. Let somebody know that you don't offer no refunds. We should have seen this note that's taped randomly to the back of the wall. We should have known better. And yes, I did lie for my friend. Like my friend was like, no, I didn't wear them outside. But like, I just didn't like the way this girl was coming at her. Like, it's not necessary. All you had to do was say, sweetheart, I wish I could help you. But we actually don't offer refunds here, like at all. You know what I mean? And so, you know, if you decide to purchase from here again, make sure that you really do try on the shoes and you know, stuff like that, like customer service, bitch. I shit you not. She looks at us and she goes, what you dumb bitches can't read? Vanessa, Vanessa, I literally started hitting the table and I was like, Vanessa, Vanessa, Vanessa. Did she just call us dumb bitches? Did she just call us dumb bitches? <laughs> Girl, I was like, I needed confirmation before I jump over this fucking counter. Ooh, bitch. And Vanessa looked at me and she was like, bitch, she really did. She really did. I was like, <laughs> Vanessa, get your shit. Get your shit. We're leaving right now. And she's just, and this girl is just sitting here like acting all bad. Like she just did something. And I looked at her and I was like, let me tell you something. Let me tell, hmm, let me tell you something. I'm going to remove myself from this situation because if one more slick thing comes out of that fucking mouth of yours, I swear on everything, bitch, I am not the one. First part of my sentence, I was smiling because I was like the audacity. But by the time I was finished with my sentence, I like went straight face and I was like, I am currently working on myself, bitch, but I am not 100% there, so do not fucking try me. You need to learn about customer service, bitch, or this is not your forte, okay? I don't think she knew that, like, I knew that this was a family-owned business. Like, you're not just some random employee, bitch. I know that this is your mama and daddy's shop, and you over here talking to people like that. I don't care. Like, I could see if you were, like, so, so busy, and, like, we're just taking up your time, and, like, even that, though. Like, you don't call your customers dumb bitches. What the fuck? Like, it's bad enough that you got an attitude over here snatching shit but you gonna come out your fucking face and start cussing at it bitch please i was like y'all the minute i mentioned her dad y'all she switched up so fucking fast she was like that's not necessary it's like can y'all just like take the shoes and go you all here for me i was like uh-huh yeah i'll go i'll go but you gonna hear from me. You gonna hear from me. So the whole time I'm talking shit and I was like over here talking to people like you stupid. Over here talking to people like you stupid. And then you have the audacity to ask if we're done, bitch, please. Tell me why. Fast forward, I don't even know how much time. But like it wasn't it wasn't too much time because I still recognize this bitch. We have a night out with our friends. And we're actually taking like a party bus out to a club. It was somebody's birthday, girl. So we started to club hopping, you know, on a party bus. We're a partying bitch. So like we did pre-gaming at our friend's house. And then we all piled into the bus and we're like, you know, still drinking and stuff. So we were like, woo! 
oh, you know, like on a whole other level of messed up by the time we got to the club. We stopped at the first club. One of my friends is already throwing up on the bus. We stayed there for like a good 20, 25 minutes. We all come back out of the club. We pile back into the bus also because ain't nobody trying to pay for the drinks in there when we have whole ass bottles on the bus, bitch. So, you know, we kept coming in and out, right? I would say like the second or third spot that we stopped at, <laughs> So Vanessa's there, right? So we go to this other club and keep in mind, girl, like this is very sparse for me. It's very blurry because like I was already doing the most and I was a big shots taker, like constantly taking shots. So I was like, Woo! you know, all I remember is that there was a line and I was pissed about it. And I was like, fuck, this place has a line. Like, I don't want to stand here. But the line went by really fast. The minute you get inside the bar is right there. This place was actually pretty small, right? This time I'm starting to feel woozy. I'm definitely, definitely like very much to the wind, okay? So my goal was to find somewhere to sit. So there was the bar right there and they had the bar stools right in front of it. So I beeline it over to the bar. I don't wanna order no drinks, I've had enough, but I just needed to sit down, right? I go up to sit down on the stool and I just hear <sighs> Bitch, this was back then when high lows were all the fucking jam. You know, like the skirts that are like high in the front and like long in the back. And so I had one of those on and it was like black and the back part, like I guess the train, if you will, it was like this black sheer material. And so when I went to go sit down, like I'm all messed up. I hear that sound and I'm like, oh, bitch, I just ripped my pants. And then I was like, I ain't got no pants, I have a skirt. Girl, I looked down, tell me why, when I had like, somehow when I put myself on the stool, swung my legs down or something, and my heel went directly through that sheer part of my skirt. So my foot is literally stuck like this. I look all stupid. I'm like all tipsy as shit, and I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like stuck like that, right? David comes, he's like, babe, are you okay? And like, he's messed up too, and I was like, I'm stupid. Stuck, y'all. I look so dumb. I look so dumb. Finally, David like looks down. He like gets my heel out of my skirt, and like now I have this hole in my in the back of my skirt, girl. I didn't even care, right? And Vanessa comes up to me and she like leans up against me. She's been drinking too. She was like, "Bitch," and a girl, I thought she was talking about me, and I was like, "Stop! Like, don't make fun of me." And I was like, "I know I have a hole in my skirt now." She was like, "What?" She was like, "No, bitch." She was like, "Did you see who's here?" And I was like. Even in my drunk stage, I'm like, oh, the tea, who's here? I was like, who, who's here? Girl, we had like so much drama going on and like, you know, some of our relationships were new. You know how that shit goes, right? So I was like, who, bitch? And she was like, look across the bar. <laughs> Y'all, I'm sitting here, I'm so messed up. Like, bitch, tell me why it's that girl from Angels. <laughs> the one that called us dumb bitches. And she's looking right over here. I look up at her and she's like, <laughs> y'all this bitch saw my ass almost fall out of the fucking stool she saw me struggling with my skirt she saw me stuck like that like she just saw me struggle and i know she did because her and her stupid little funky friends were over there just snickering and laughing at me bitch and i knew that they were, <laughs> they were laughing Y'all, because it was a struggle. It, it was very much like not playing it off or nothing because I was messed up. So I know that I looked hella stupid. And the girl that called us a dumb bitch was right there watching me. <laughs> Look how dumb. Oh my God, girl. Listen, okay, so save your comments. I know that I shouldn't have gotten myself involved and like we could have handled the situation differently, but, but karma came right around and bit my ass, okay? Because I looked stupid in front of her. So don't tell me nothing, okay? Y'all, I was so embarrassed. I was like, we need to go. Like immediately, I was like, we need to come right now. And Vanessa's looking over there. She's like, what bitch? What bitch? Whatever. Whatever. Like y'all are drunk too. Like what the fuck ever. So like Vanessa's like trying to like stick up for me. And I was like, bitch, it's not even worth it. I did look hella stupid. Like we need to go. We end up leaving. I think we stopped at like one more spot. And then I barely remember us uh, getting home. And I finally saw the skirt like after I had changed out of it. Y'all, that hole was so big. Like it was in the bottom of the skirt, but it was so big. And it just looked so terrible. Y'all, and bye bye. I was so embarrassed. So needless to say, now I think twice before involving myself in shit because karma will come back and bite you if you are in the wrong. And honestly, I felt like that was karma. I knew that my friend was lying. I did. I knew it. Still went to bat for her. And I just feel like that shit happened in front of that girl. Like, what are the odds? Like, are you serious? And like, she saw me and like, because it was, she was like literally looking directly at me because of the commotion that I was causing because I was stuck, bitch. Y'all think I'm loud now? Girl, when I'm drunk, girl.
Hi guys, thank you for watching, I love you guys so much, please like and subscribe to see more great videos, see you again.